And I'm going for some racing pads right here. Remember this beast, still around. So guys, check this out if you remember. Check this out. Hello guys, before we start today's video, I know I've not posted in a while. I've actually been working on some major, major things for the channel. We're gonna be pointing the channel in a slightly different direction, but it's gonna be epic. I've got something big coming your way. I know a lot of you guys always ask, D, how can I support? D, how can I give you a drink, etc., etc." I've just launched a Patreon site. I'm gonna be dropping behind the scenes content every day. I'm gonna be allowing you guys to have a direct chat and link to ask any questions that you wanna know about salvage, etc. So stop. Click this link right now and join me on Patreon and you will be directly helping Salvage Nation to bring you guys and everyone else better content. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are wrapping up this build and I've got something crazy. As you can tell by the thumbnail, I'm going to be going for more power. We're going to be upgrading a few more bits and then I'm going to be wrapping up this build and I want you to tell me, did I just build the fastest BMW 118 in the UK or did I just make another 140? Let me know. But for now, let's roll on the video. So if you're new to the channel, this is my BMW M140 Evo, but it was not always an M140 and it never looked this good. Check this out. When I first purchased this car, it looked like this. It was a busted BMW 118i on a 2011 pre-facelift model. I went ahead and I swapped out the engine, all the suspension components, and I turned this thing into a fully fledged BMW M140. We cut no corners on this build from the fueling system all the way to the brakes, and I even facelifted both the rear and the front end. Speaking of facelift, have a look at that M2 front bumper. And I even managed to retain the sunroof function on the interior I went ahead and I upgraded the steering wheel and I added a few mods to the engine. It's got an uprated charge pipe and a Cobb development front mount air intake. With the help of MHD tuning I went ahead and I remapped this car to stage 2 and to hold all that power I added some M4 front disc brakes and now it's sitting on a set of 19 inch JR37s from Japan Racing and they look amazing. Now it's time to wrap this up, I'm going to be pushing more power and I've got a few more things up my sleeve. Alright you guys, so now that you're up to date with the car, check out these little goodies. I'm going to start right here. Before I continue, I want to give a massive thank you to LLL Parts. They've been so good to me on the channel. They've supplied plenty of parts for lots of different builds. And if you need any parts from LLL Parts, you can head over to their website, use discount code SN10 and you'll receive 10% off. But have a look at this. This is my old fuel pump. This is the high pressure fuel pump on the B58 engine. This is the stock one. Last night we stayed behind really late, myself and Akil, and we fitted the B58 TU pump, which can be found on the latest Supra. B58 engine. This is going to allow me to go to stage 2 plus which should be rated around 500 brake horsepower. But moving on, remember I told you I fitted a set of used M4 brake discs when I was fitting that big brake kit um, in the last episode. Well, LLL parts have sent me out the brand new M4 brake discs for the front. I'm going to be fitting them. And in the post, these bad boys showed up. These are a set of Ferrodo racing brake pads, which I'm gonna need if I'm gonna be pumping lots of power into that car. I'm gonna have to control that power, and to do that, that's why I upgraded to the bigger brake disc, and I'm going for some racing pads right here. As you know, the M140 brake calipers are the four-part Brimbos, so they're kind of high-performance calipers already, so I didn't need to change them. So I've just gone up for these beefier brake discs. The other one is in the box. Let's get the car inside, and we're gonna get straight to work I want to swap out these bad boys and then we're gonna continue So guys, as you know, swapping out these brake discs are pretty easy. You've got two large 18 bolts on the back. Once you remove those, you're able to remove the caliper. But before removing the caliper, I had to remove the brake discs. They're actually not bad, still got plenty of life in them. 
but I'm gonna be upgrading them to the Ferodo race spec. So if anyone is ever wondering how to change your M140, M135i, or any BMW with these performance brakes, it's dead simple, knock the pins out, take the retaining clip out, and then they literally slide out. If you're new to the channel, just a reminder, this is the big brake kit that I picked up from Williams Performance. I installed that in the last episode. That allows you to go from standard 340 millimeter disc to these M4 380 millimeter. If anyone wants to do this, head over to the Williams Performance website and you can grab that. Also, these, they're used, but they're in great condition. I had no vibrations, I had no issues. If anyone wants to buy these, do get in touch. I'll be selling them cheap. These are so big. Bloody hell, look at the size of that. Bloody hell. That is heavy. Good stopping power. I'm gonna have a look at these bad boys. Nice, brand new, shiny OEM part from LLL Parts. Have a look at that. So if the new brake disc in hand, I went ahead and completely messed this up. <laughs> Have a look at that. But there's a specific hole that you had to screw the retaining screw into and clearly that was not the one. Once it was in the correct slot, that went on without a problem. And here I am just double checking those new rotors. How sick do they look? New M4 rotor in place, it was time to check out the new Ferodo Racing race pads. These things are gonna give me some serious stopping power. Once I refitted the caliper, all I had to do is squeeze the pistons down and the new pads literally just slot into place before refitting the retainer clips. With that side completed, I went ahead and repeated the same job on the other side and everything went together without a hitch. I can't wait to try these new brakes out because I've heard great, great things about the Ferodo Racing race pads and with the new uprated disc brakes, I'm gonna have some serious stopping power on this beast. With those mods completed, I had to update the engine map using the MHD app, which is so easy. And now it's time to see how everything feels. It's pulling now, isn't it? Is there still milk bottle? No. <laughs> Go up. <laughs> it's grown up. Now, I was testing out the car, everything's feeling great, but check this out. As you always get in London, the lights are green and people are just walking in front of a fast oncoming car. But that is London for you and we keep it moving. Soon though, I heard the blue lights behind me and I was scared, but it was a different type of blue lights, so we kept it moving. On we go, let's head back to the garage. I've got more things to do on this beast. Now, do you guys remember the SNM4? It's still there, we're still driving this car. Guys, there you have it. TU Pump is, trust me, it is ripping. This car is almost complete. I've got one more mod up my sleeves, but before I do, check out these old builds. And I've got one in particular. I want you to tell me, what should I do with this car? I'm gonna show it to you, get in the comments. Let me know what I should do with this car. I don't know what to do with it, but this lovely car here is, it's almost 100% complete. Let me show you what I'm on about. This thing is a different beast. The way it pulls is crazy. And those new brake discs with those Ferrado brake pads are doing the job. It's slowing down and it's stopping instantly, instantly, full control of that power. Remember this beast, still around, SNM4. Still got some stuff to do to this. Um, so stay tuned for that. But let me show you something else, blast from the past. Who remembers this beast? This is my 2005. VW Golf Mark 5 GTI Stage 2, got all the works, we done so much, I had so much fun in this car, but it's literally been sat for several months now and I don't know what to do with it. Let's have a look around this car and I've got a secret task for all of you guys watching. So guys check this out, if you remember this is my 2005 Mark 5 Stage 2 GTI. I've had this car now for about almost two years I think, I've done quite a lot of content on it, but 
I just don't know what to do with it. I don't want to sell it. I think it's a classic. Um, I was thinking about facelifting the front end. I was thinking about so many different things. If you remember in the previous episode, I done the R32 rear end on it. But what should I do with this car now? I've got a plan. Um, let me, actually, you know what? Let me show you something. The car starts and drives fine, but I've had this battery light that's come up all the time. Um, it's got an issue with the, the dreaded EPC, which comes up every now and again. The engine, the engine is very good. I know for a fact it's a built engine, stage two. It's got a nice turbo on there and we upgraded the wastegate to a forged wastegate. But everything else on the car is just a little bit tatty. Have a look at this. That's a bit tatty there. Have a look at the seats right there. That's broken. The suspension is super low. It's on some old coilovers. And I was thinking about restoring everything to kind of like OEM plus. But I don't know. Let me know. If you want to see content on this car, I will do it. I've got another idea where I was going to try to see if I can source a second GTI just like this and take all the good bits from this and between the two cars make one really clean exact of a Mark V GTI. That is an idea. Let me know if that's something that you want to see. I really don't know what to do. So this is where you can get involved. I want you to tell me in the comments right now. Pause the video, get in the comments. What should I do with the Mark V GTI? And do you want to see more content on this? Should I rebuild it as, uh, should I rebuild it? Should I restore it? Should I engine swap it? I don't know. Get your crazy ideas down below. Let me know. But for now, let's continue with the video. Quick update on the Aston. In the last episode on that, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I fitted up all the rear end suspension parts, stuck the new wheel and tire on there. We got it driving for the first ever time and some new parts just came in for that. So we're gonna be starting work on that very soon. So stay tuned for another video on the 2017 Aston Martin DB11. So guys, this is a bit embarrassing. I'm chatting away, not realizing that my mic is actually dead. But what I'm saying is I've got one more mod for the M140, which is the headliner. Let's get this out of the car and get to work. So super easy to remove. I had already started the procedure off camera. Now, if you remember when I got this car, it had this gray headliner and you guys kept saying, I need to get rid of it. I couldn't find one and I'll tell you how much one costs from the dealer later on, but I've come up with a really, really clever way to make it black, which is what I needed. So allow me to explain. All right, you guys, have a look at this. This is what it looks like with the old gray roof liner removed. Um, as you can see, it has got a foam backing. I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove as much of this as possible. I've got some new fabric, which is a like for like. However, it's black and it's got a thin foam backing as well. So it should go down quite smooth, but I need to clean this all up. I'll show you the fabric, get the glue, get everything in place, stick this on the table, lay it. And then we're finally gonna have a black roof liner. Hopefully it comes out nice. I'm confident it will come out okay, but you know what? This is Salvage Nation, man. I'm not spending 700 quid on this. And I really wanted the black roof liner. You lot wanted it as well. Now we've got it. So let's continue, get it laid. So guys, after failing with several different attempts to get the headliner cleaned up, I finally found a method that seems to be working. This is using this rubber wheel on this drill. And as you can see, it's tedious, it's painstakingly long, but it's getting the job done. So I'm just gonna go ahead, clean up the entire headliner, and then I'm gonna show you the material that I picked up from AS Trends. Now I have to do this process because any lumps or uneven surfaces hidden behind that new trim is going to show through the final product and I don't want a headliner that's looking a bit lumpy. So after an hour and a half of work, this is what we're left with. As you can see, it's got a coarse surface but it's all even and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Let me show you what I picked up from the guys over at AS Trims. So guys, this is what the headliner looks like now. It's still a little bit coarse, which is actually good because it's going to give that glue something to hold on to. There's no high and low spots. I reached out to a company called AS Trims. I'll put all the information down below. This is not sponsored, but I've worked with them in the past and their stuff is top quality. I'm going to go ahead and use a blade and kind of like, especially with these little crevices and stuff, you can see I've cleaned this crevice here quite nicely. I want to make sure that all the crevices are nice and clean so that when I stretch um, that, that fabric into these crevices, it's not gonna have anything blocking those crevices. Let's open up the fabric, I'm gonna show you that. Another thing that crossed my mind, a lot of you guys were saying about the Starlight. Guys, like this car is all about performance and Starlight, when I was a bit younger, that's something that I would have done, but for me, it's just not worth the hassle. I'm not really too fussed about Starlight, but if you wanted to do this, this would be a perfect time now to drill those thousands of holes and get that Starlight installed. However, we're not doing that, so let's roll on. So guys, the package from AS Trims, have a look. AS Trims has just arrived. Is there anything in there? It's meant to be glue in there as well. Thank you, Jason. 
So with the package in hand, I was excited to get to work. Once opened up, I was relieved to find the glue hidden within the roll. And as you can see, it's the high temperature glue, which is needed for this application. Have a look at that. It's meant to be like a fine weave. This is what you find in the BMWs. I don't know if you can see that on camera, actually. It's a small fine weave with a three millimeter foam backing. Let's get it on. I was a little bit worried um, that I get the right sizes, but this is five meters long by 1.6 meters across. And as you can see, if I size it up, I've got plenty of space on either side. So I'm not worried about that. And definitely I'm gonna have some left over because I just remembered I need to remove the, there's a slide panel in the car. I'm gonna cover that as well. But before I do anything, what I'm gonna do is get some gloves, blow it all off again. There's a lot to do. I'll stick you on a time lapse. Let's get this laid. So when I explained to the guys at AS Trims what my plans were, they recommended this particular material for the stretching properties. This is going to allow me to stretch it and really get it seated around all the crevices on this roof liner. Now as you can see, I've sprayed some glue on the actual roof liner as well as the fabric and this is going to allow a very strong bond between the fabric and the roof liner. So I'm just starting to lay the fabric from the rear of the roof liner, making sure that I stretch and manipulate that fabric into all the corners, crevices, but it's actually going down pretty well. Once that section was completed, I moved on a little bit more and I found that doing it this way just made it a lot more cleaner and manageable. I repeated this process until the entire roof liner was covered and this is how I got on. Guys, I think that's it. Are you ready for this? This thing looks so sick. Check it out. So guys, check it out. What used to be an old, grey, dusty headliner is now a super clean, all black, M140 headliner. So guys, there you have it. Um, this is my new headliner. I am happy with it. It's got some little marks and stuff. This has really annoyed me right here. So this little run here really annoyed me because I was doing up the sides right here and then when I sprayed, the glue just squirted upwards randomly, so it must have been blocked on the nozzle. But I'll let it dry, and once it's fully dry, I'll get a special brush, and I should be able to brush that out. But other than that, this fabric has gone down really, really smoothly, really, really nicely. I'm very happy with the way it's turned out. Um, I did some trimming there, and I fitted this dome light right here. That's gone in, have a look, like everything, all these little creases and edges, I tried to make sure that I kind of captured those back, and have a look at that. Look at the little indentations here, this is for the sun visors. All of that has gone down really, really well. Once it fully dries, I'm gonna cut out the little squares because they don't tuck over. That's gonna be a perfect cut. So I want it to be fully cured before I go cutting into that. And then I'm just gonna fit in the new dome lights in the front. And yeah, so once this is all dried up, I'm gonna get it into the car. Guys, it's a horrible day outside, but I've got the car in the garage. 
checked this out, I went ahead and I've cut out all of the little squares for all the dome lights, the handles, the sun visors, etc, etc. But check this out. So these are all the black handles, sun visors, and I've even got the little microphone in black to replace all the grey ones that came with this car. This is the bezel for the sunroof, so it's going to hide kind of like here. It goes around right here. And obviously that's grey, but the guys from LLL Park said, no, D, we can't have you moving like that. So they went ahead. I like for like part in black and it's like suede black have a look at that so let's get all of this stuff installed on the car um, and lastly off camera I went ahead and I wrapped this is the little shade that you can open and close I didn't have a black handlebar right there but I actually quite like that two-tone that's the only thing that's left that's gray and I, I quite like it so I'll just leave it like that all of that needs to get into that car let's do it so after months and months of work Tons of people saying we cannot do this. We have turned this car from a busted, non-running BMW 118i into something that looks totally amazing. It's a fully fledged M140. So the question is, did I build another M140 or is this the fastest 118 in the UK? Whatever it is, it looks great, it sounds great and this is by far my proudest build that I've done to date on the channel. With the help of MHD tuning and XHP flashing tool, we were able to get maximum power out of this car as it is and it's by far my most fun car to drive. I love it. Let me know what you think of the build. So guys, there you have it. This is finito. This build is complete. I think we created something super special. I'm very happy with it. And this is the last episode that I'm going to be putting out on this car. I don't know, in the future I might get it wrapped and I might be redoing the alloys in bronze. A lot of you guys said bronze and I agree. Um, if I do, I'll update you, but that's it for this build. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, press the like button. I hope you enjoyed the build. Let me know what your best moment was. And before we wrap up, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you want to support me and support the channel, support what we're doing here at Salvage Nation, subscribe to the Patreon site. Guaranteed you're going to get some insights. You're going to be able to chat to me and you're going to get some behind the scenes bits. For the members already on Patreon, you would know exactly what we're doing on the Aston and the other plans for the channel. I've got some exciting builds coming your way and I've got some exciting plans. Today I had a very important meeting with some very important people and in, let's just say 2024 is going to be the year of Salvage Nation. I'm telling you. But for now, I'm heading off so keep it moving and I'll see you in the next one. In the next one, we're back on the Aston Martin DB11 build and we are repairing that fiberglass tub in the rear. We are doing a lot of work on the suspension and we're going to begin reassembling that rear end and we're going to be making one giant leap to getting this car back on the road. Hopefully, we can get a first drive. But to see that, you have to subscribe to the channel, make sure your bells are on and I'll see you in this one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that, why don't you check out one of my previous videos on the left, there's plenty in the playlist. And if you want to know more about the Salvage game, why don't you become a member of Salvage Nation and I'll be there to guide you along the way. And don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram if you want to get an inside scoop before YouTube.